Hey, how's it going? And I just wanted to do this updated tutorial on the event dispatcher. If you've been following my channel at all, you know over the years I've done different tutorials on it. And this one is the most updated as far as the most efficient way of doing it. The most efficient, memory efficient way of creating a UI using a event dispatcher. So this is the latest and greatest of what I know. So what we've got here is if I hit play, there's just a progress bar there. So if I click into the scene and I just press one, you'll see it's decrementing appropriately. So the way this is set up, once you understand this basic setup, then you can apply it to any other kind of UI widget or object you want to use. So anyway, I'll be back in just a minute to show you how to do this. Okay, I'm back. And before I get started, I wanted to mention one of the reasons I wanted to do this tutorial is that I've been seeing a lot of chatter and a lot of things on the internet about memory efficiency and that you shouldn't be doing casting and things like that. But in a certain way, it's difficult to get around casting sometimes, or it's difficult sometimes to get a reference to another blueprint you can get into some communication access issues. And so I have a solution to that where it's a variation of casting. You're getting the actor from the class. It's not technically casting. The difference here is that we we're creating a lightweight blueprint from which we're going to build our controls. So we're not going to put our controls in our blueprint third person. We're going to put our controls in its own separate blueprint, which is lightweight. So memory light. So that way, when we reference it, we're not really increasing much overhead on our system. And you'll see this once we get going. The first thing that I'm gonna do is create our UI widget. So I'm gonna right click, I'm just on a content level, I'm a third person template. I'm gonna right click and I'm going to get a user interface here, the widget blueprint. I'll just leave it called new widget blueprint and then I'm just gonna double click into it. And this is just super quick and dirty right here. I'm just gonna get a canvas panel and drag that onto the scene like that. And let's see how big this is. We can make this 1920 by 1080 and I'm just going to reposition this. I'm gonna scroll in a little bit. And then I'm just gonna drag, drag it. I'm just gonna get a progress bar. And we'll just drag this right here, put it right there. We can stretch it out a little bit. And it's just for examples. We wanna make sure it's a variable. We can leave it anchored right there. There is a setting on here for the percentage. It's right here, and we're going to set it to 1. So it should fill the bar with the blue color. Okay, and that's all we need to do here. So I'm just going to go ahead and compile and save that. Now we're just going to go ahead and create our blueprint for our user interface. So this is how we're going to keep this efficient. So we have our widget blueprint right here, and now I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna to go to blueprint class, I'm going to create a actor, and I'm just gonna call this UI interface. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and double click into this. We don't need anything in the viewport, this is all gonna be in the event graph here. So we'll click here on the event graph, off of event begin play. We don't need these two nodes, so I'm just gonna select and delete them. Here, I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna create our user widget. So I'm just gonna go create widget, and we're gonna choose our new widget blueprint here. And of course, you know, we've done this a million times. We're gonna add to viewport here. This is all pretty standard. And just hook that up there like that and then we're going to drive this off of a keyboard event but this could be driven off of your game logic or you know getting information from another blueprint or however you want to configure it i'm going to right click and get a keyboard press and like i said the beauty of this way is that when we make a reference to this blueprint this is going to be very lightweight it's so lightweight it's not even worth mentioning how light it is so anyway, here we're gonna create a float variable here and I'm just gonna call this value. And we're going to get a make it a float and we can make it public if we want. Compile and save that. The initial value we're gonna to set to one, which is the same as 100%. And then we're gonna drag off of here and get this. And then we're gonna drag off of here and go set this. And then 
we are going to pull off of here and go subtract. Subtract right here. And we're going to subtract 1% each time we press it. So it's gonna be 0 0.01. And this is just going to plug into here. And this is going to plug into there. Now we're going to get into the efficiencies. So we're going to get an event dispatcher. And I think some of the confusion that people have with the event dispatcher is just understanding the terminology that's used. So it's right here. So you can see it's something they want you to use, right? It, but you can think of it in terms as a broadcast or a signal and a receive. This is going to send out a, essentially a broadcast and everyone who has a receiver can pick up the signal and they can act upon it if they want. The efficiency of it is it only sends out a signal once the event happens. It's not constantly running on a tick or anything like that. I'll just call this broadcast, broadcast, just to make the terminology clear. So we have our broadcast. And now if I try to drag this onto the scene, there's this one called assign. We don't need that. We'll go call. And this essentially will send out our broadcast. Now there's another thing that we can do here, and this is my, something I didn't fully appreciate or realize or take advantage of initially myself. And so this is the improved understanding of everything that we can add an input on the event dispatcher too. So not only can we send a signal, we can also send data when we send the signal. So we can create a new parameter and I'm just gonna call this float, call it float and we're gonna make it a float. And then you'll see it comes right here on this pin. Then we can just pop this into here. So not only will this event dispatcher broadcast a signal, it will also pass the data that we put here on the input. So now we are done here. So there's just a couple other things we need to do before I forget. Let's go back in here. We need to drag this into the scene like that. And then we got to come over here and where it says auto receive input, it's disabled. We want to set player zero. Now we are done there. And all we have to do is finish up here in the new widget blueprint. So over here, all we have to do is jump into the graph over here. And there's just a couple things that we need to do here. So the issue that we get into is we need a reference to this UI interface, this UI interface, this blueprint over here. And there's different ways you can do it, but the way that I like to do it and the way that seems to work the best for me is to get the actor of that class. So the actor of this class. So what we're going to do is off of it construct, we're going to go get actor of class right here. And we could also cast. We, there wouldn't be any harm in casting to this UI interface because let's look at this real super quick. If we come over here and I click on this UI and right click on it, look at the size map. It's minuscule. It's that's the disk size, but we can switch it to memory size. Look at that. It's just 18. It's it's nothing. So there's no harm in casting to this. So that's why I'm saying they say don't cast, but if it's this lightweight, it's a non-issue. So casting is not a problem. So you can't universally say casting is bad or getting all actors of class is bad when it's this lightweight of an issue. So when you're casting to a whale, yes, that's bad. But if you're casting to a sardine, that's not a problem on the new widget blueprint. And we're going to get that UI interface here. It's down here somewhere. I can just search for it. UI interface right there. Now that we have this reference, we can bind or the other word could be, if you're in Unreal Editor for Fortnite, could be subscribe. So now there's this event dispatcher that's broadcasting the signal. Well, to get that signal, I need to subscribe to that signal. So anyone can access the signal, but it's like I've got to have the, the cable box. You know, I need a connection to get the signal. So that's what this is. This is what this is what, is what allows me to do that, this reference here. So now I drag off of here and I can search actually for a sign. It should be a sign broadcaster right here. And the advantage of doing a sign is that it comes already wired in with the event. So that saves you a click right there. And then you'll see here that we have our float value, right? So we have our data stream already set up for us. So then all I have to do is gra drag the progress bar here, get it. And then there's only one node left to go. I drag off of here and I'll go percent 
set percent like that and then this just the exact pin wire is in there this wire is in there and that's the whole enchilada that's that's the whole thing and so we don't need this event tick so i'm going to delete that so this is as far as i know the most efficient way to create your ui using a an event dispatcher and the the main takeaway is that we don't create our ui interface within our third person blueprint because this is so lightweight that there's no problem casting to it at all no problem whatsoever so anyway if we come here and we check we can go to the size map on both of these we go on the new widget blueprint and look at the size map here look how small that is that's nothing it's nothing now if this logic was inside our blueprint third person then we had to cast to that yes that would be a growing problem but this is there's no problem here so let's just see if this works i'll hit play there's our progress bar i click into the scene i press one and there it's working just fine so anyway that's it i hope you found this helpful take care have a great day and i'll talk to you next time